welcome back to Food Prep Guy. We are hanging out in the kitchen, but we are gonna be talking about the garden today. We are almost hitting the off season of gardening. Even though we're heading into the fall and winter garden, a lot of people don't do the fall and winter gardening um, thing. So the vast majority of the marketing and um, garden centers and all of that happens in the spring and summer. So we are kind of moving out of that time frame, And that means it, you can get some pretty significant savings right now on soil amendments and fertilizers, whether they are uh, stores are trying to clear out their spring and summer stock or whether they are trying to, well, that's basically what it is. They're trying to get things moved out and ready to switch in the fall and winter gear. So right now you can save some money. And because of that, I want to talk to you about my top favorite soil amendments. Um, when I first started gardening, I didn't know what an amendment was. And so I have not used amendments for my entire gardening career. And so I can tell you that after years of gardening without amendments and then uh, trying them out, learning about them, taking the time to study them, and now having spent several years using garden amendments, I can tell you that it is a huge difference when you feed plants what they need. I mean, obviously, right? Light bulb moment should have hit me a long time ago, um, but I just didn't know. I didn't know about amendments. Um, I thought you just put some seeds in the ground and grow and you know, it should grow just fine. <laughs> but I have since learned a whole lot more since then. So I have five, one, two, three, four, I have four, five options I want to talk to you about today. Um, I am out of one, but we can still talk about it. Um, but I want to start with the amendment that I truly believe is the key that unlocks the potential and the benefit of all other amendments. I know that's a bold statement, but I absolutely believe it based on my experience this year. And that is mycorrhizal fungi. I took, so I take, I like to use the winter season to pick a topic and really dig into the research, like learn everything I can about that one singular topic. And I had been hearing um, gardeners, teachers that I trust who has been talking about mycorrhizal fungi for a couple of years now and I just have never tried it. Um, I just, I guess I guess, I guess I wasn't convinced. I think I thought maybe it was just like a marketing thing. I um, mean, just a kind of like a gimmick new product in the gardening world because I've been gardening a pretty long time and I've only heard about mycorrhizal fungi in the last couple of years. Um, but I bit the bullet last winter. I assigned that topic to myself of learning everything I could about mycorrhizal fungi. And then in the spring, I bought this bag. This is my second bag. So I used a whole bag in my spring and summer garden. I think it's two pounds, 2.2 pounds. It covers a hundred. Oh no, I don't know how much it covers. It covered my whole garden. And you can go back and look at garden tour videos that we've done in the past to see how big that is um, to kind of judge how far a bag might stretch for you if you decide you want to try it. Um, but this whole, it, it was my entire spring and summer garden. I want to say it was like $25 or something like that. I can't, can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll have a link in the description box below. You can check it out. But what I learned over the winter this past season is that that fungi is it has a relationship with the roots of a plant that allows it to absorb the nutrients that are already existing in the soil. Um, so as, I, as I've been gardening throughout the years, I have learned how important it is to feed certain plants certain nutrients and really pair amendments with the plants that need that particular nutrient, that particular mineral. I'm watching my oven here. I'm multitasking today. Um, I've got a canning pot over here going so if you see me looking that way a lot, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Um, but anyway, it has the ability to unlock the nutrients and make them more available to the plant. Um, plant roots, we all know how important plant roots are. You have a very strong, robust root system, then you have a very strong, robust plant. And the opposite is also true. But there can be we know that there is bacteria, we know that there is fungi, we know that there are microorganisms that live in the soil and create this biome, like kind of like the bacteria in our gut. You know, there's good, there's bad, there's a balance. When things get out of balance, 
or when certain bacteria or fungi are missing, even if you have a good strong root system, it can still lack the ability to extract calcium and magnesium and nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium. It can lack the ability to extract those nutrients from the soil to feed the plant. So mycorrhizal fungi, putting that in the ground where it's going to come into direct contact with the roots allows that plant to absorb whatever is there. So that's why I said, I made that bold statement that I think this is the key that unlocks all the other amendments that we're going to talk about. Because one thing that I have learned in the past, I threw, there was one year where I knew I was planting a root crop for carrots. I knew I had, I knew it needed phosphorus. So I just kept throwing phosphorus at it. Whoops, one second. Okay, I have alarms going off all over the place. Kitchen timers, phone timers, all kinds of timers. Um, but anyway, where was I? Um, oh yes, carrots. I was throwing phosphorus at it, throwing phosphorus at it, throwing phosphorus at it. Because what do carrots need? They need phosphorus. Um, and they, the, the carrots never, they weren't the better for it. And I was like, why, you know, I gave them what they needed. Why didn't this result happen? And I now know and believe, I didn't have like a test or anything. So, you know, I guess I can't know for sure. But I now know and believe that it was because those carrots just could not unlock the nutrients, that phosphorus that I was feeding it because there was not the right bacteria and the right fungi in the soil at the time. So this past year, like I said, this was my first year using it in the spring. What I did was for all of my direct sown seeds and transplants, so it didn't matter if I was starting from seed or starting from a transplant, I put about a teaspoon I did, I followed the instructions. So whatever the instructions say, if it's a teaspoon or a tablespoon, a tablespoon, a tablespoon. I put a tablespoon of that stuff at the base of the hole, wherever I was gonna be planting in. Whether I was doing like a trough, I would just sprinkle it all down the trough. If I was digging a hole for a, uh, for a seedling, I put it down in the bottom of the hole. Wherever the roots were gonna be, I wanted those roots to come in direct contact. And I can tell you now, we fast forward to the middle of August, I have already pulled the vast majority of my summer crops. I am still working with tomatoes and peppers and herbs. Those are coming in on a daily basis and I am preserving those as they come in. But my cucumbers, um, my zucchini, my green beans, things like that, I have already pulled and I have never had root systems like what I pulled out of the ground this year. I was absolutely amazed. I mean, some of them looked like stinking tap roots. I mean, a tap root is like when you have a very, a long single root that goes extremely far down into the ground. And my cucumbers, and now it, they, it wasn't a tap root, but my cucumbers, my zucchini, and my green beans, they had like two to three foot long thick roots like that branching out from the base of the plant. I've been, I've been using uh, weed fabric this year. You'll, you'll see that in past garden tour videos if you're interested in checking that out. And I was, that was a big experiment this year as well. But I had roots, there were some that I had a hard time pulling out of the ground because even though I didn't have weed fabric in this particular area where I was pulling the root, the roots under the ground stretched so far that it was tucked up under the weed fabric in like a different area. I mean, it was insane. It blew my mind. It was literally, it was one of those moments where, you know, like you have a jaw dropping moment, but you don't literally drop your jaw. I literally dropped my jaw and I was like pulling these things out of the ground. I've never seen roots like this before. And I know for sure it was because of this. I also, because of that, had beautiful and abundant harvests of crops this year. Um, my tomatoes haven't been the best ever that I've ever had in the world, um, but tomatoes to me are like a kind of like a different ball game because I live in the hot, humid South and disease is just rampant fungal disease here. Um, but Cucumbers, zucchini, there's that timer I was telling you about. Let me get this off real quick. Cucumber, zucchini, um, green beans, peppers. 
I've never had peppers this big. Um, and even though I have struggled with disease on my tomatoes, the uh, I didn't have a single problem with mildew on my, with fungal mildew on my cucumbers this year, where normally they really struggle a lot with that. Um, I didn't have bean rust, prolific bean rust on my green beans. Um, it was just the plants, not only were they more productive, but I think they were hardier and able to better withstand the environmental pressures of disease and even pests. Um, so I, I mean, as long as I am able, I will have a bag of mycorrhizal fungi on hand every garden season from this point out, Lord willing. It is that, I mean, it's like, I almost don't want to garden without it anymore because I have seen the difference of harvest and I, and I keep good tallies of what I harvest, what I can and preserve and put up. And so I can look at that side by side from last year to this year. Um, and it, it is just, it's remarkable. Um, and I attribute it to prayer, number one, and mycorrhizal fungi, unlocking the benefits and potential of the other amendments, which let's move on to now. I think I have talked enough about mycorrhizal fungi. Okay, so amendment number two, that is my absolute favorite, is bone meal. Bone meal is going to provide phosphorus. You can see that middle number there. So these three numbers, in case you are brand new to amendments and fertilizers, you have three numbers and they go in the order of N, P, K. N stands for nitrogen, P stands for phosphorus, and K stands for potassium. So you can see this middle number, the P, the phosphorus, is the highest out of all of the other three numbers. So this tells you this is a high phosphorus supplement. Um, and bone meal, you can see right here, it says promotes strong roots, bigger blooms, and better vegetables. But why does it have anything to do with bigger blooms? Because of the root system. You have a good strong root system, you have a good strong crop, you have good strong fruit production. So bone meal is important for, or phosphorus is important for any plant. All plants need some sort of ratio of NPK. But since we are talking about this is something that roots need. It is extremely important for root crops since the root crops, the roots are the edible parts that we harvest and eat. So carrots, onions, potatoes, turnips, radishes. I'm sure I'm missing plenty, but you get it. If you eat the root, you need phosphorus for that. Um, so I amend heavily things like carrots and potatoes and onions with bone meal, radishes as well. Um, and I do go ahead and amend tomatoes with it because tomatoes, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm the only one that has struggled with as much with tomatoes. <laughs> um, but I feel like tomatoes are so needy. Like they are the demanding child in the garden. It is tomatoes. Um, so even though tomatoes are not the edible roots, I still go ahead and supplement with bone meal because of the fact that you have big strong roots, you have a big strong plant. So phosphorus, bone meal is my favorite form of phosphorus, use it for root crops, okay? Next is going to be the one that I don't have on hand and that is blood meal. Blood meal is going to be your nitrogen source. There are all sorts of nitrogen sources. Um, the amendments that I'm giving you today are more of your natural type amendments. You can absolutely get synthetic amendments and fertilizers as well. Um, but I try to like to stick to um, the natural forms and blood meal is just what it sounds like. It's kind of gross, but it's basically dehydrated blood. <laughs> um, but it is very high in nitrogen and a whole lot of your summer crops. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and say most of your summer crops need high nitrogen. Your especially high nitrogen feeders are going to be your corn, everything in your squash family, tomatoes, peppers, even melons, even cucumbers. I mean, like I said, pretty much, pretty much most of your summer heat loving crops are pretty uh, heavily, heavily feeding on nitrogen. So again, uh, blood meal is something that I will mix into the soil before I plant, whether it's a direct sow or whether it's a seedling. Um, if you were to look at the three numbers on the blood meal, 
package, this number would be way up and this number would be either both zeros or like a really low number on your middle number. Um, but that is going to be my probably must have uh, amendment for the heat loving summer garden. Okay, number three is calcium and a magnesium supplement, CalMag. I use the Fox Farm Bush Doctor brand. I love this brand. Fox Farm is just fantastic. Their soil is fantastic. I haven't met a Fox Farm amendment that I didn't like that wasn't effective. Um, so I do stick to the Fox Farm brand. I'm not usually a brand snob when it comes to anything in life. Um, but when it comes to Fox Farm, I mean, I just, I love everything that they put out pretty much. But calcium, magnesium, is going to be your blossoms. It's gonna be it's gonna be what helps your plants produce more blooms and therefore produce more fruit. If you don't have blooms, you don't have fruit. So think about all of your plants that produce fruit from the flowers. They're gonna need calcium, magnesium. Now the one that comes to mind first and foremost is tomatoes because calcium and magnesium is um, well, a deficiency in calcium and magnesium is what causes blossom end rot for tomatoes. Um, it is also one of the issues that it causes flowers to just drop off and, and, and fall off on squash and zucchini. Now, that can be a pollinator issue. Not uh, The flower didn't get pollinated um, or didn't get pollinated enough. They can fall off for that reason as well. But they can also fall off if they're not getting enough calcium and magnesium. And again, you don't have flowers, you don't have fruit. So this is a very important amendment. Um, this is something that you uh, don't apply to the soil um, at the moment of planting. This is something that you wait until your plant starts fruiting. Or if you just see the first little buds that hadn't even opened up yet, um, the first little blossoms or buds, that's when you want to go ahead and start a regimen of the cow mag. And you generally want to apply it every two weeks throughout the harvest season. Um, Peppers and tomatoes are what I use this the most on. I don't generally have any issues at all out of my cucumbers and zucchini and green beans and all those other things. I do tend to have um, blossom and rot issues, flower dropping issues, and things like that out of my tomatoes and peppers. They're just a little bit more finicky where I live. Um, and the cow mag can really help solve that problem. So I think we are on number three or four. Can't remember. I think that I think that was four. Okay, fifth one and final one is going to be my all-around champion winner in the garden. Besides this, I mean, like I said, nothing, nothing beats this. I am a huge cheerleader for that. But my favorite fertilizer amendment, whatever you want to call it, this would be considered more of a fertilizer, is fish emulsion. Fish emulsion is basically blended up fish parts and fish guts and fish. Um, it is very very stinky. Um, almost nauseating so but I'll tell you that it is worth it um, now if you're gonna be uh, starting seeds indoors or growing something indoors and in like a, a hydroponic type thing I do not recommend it because it will be really stinky inside your house but out in the garden it's not that big of a deal um, but the reason why I really love fish fertilizer is because it's pretty balanced um, and this particular one is Neptune's harvest and it has a little bit higher of a phosphorus than it does the other ones, as you can see. So it's a, a decent nitrogen, really good phosphorus, not as much potassium, but that's par for the course. We don't need near as much potassium in high amounts like we do phosphorus and um, nitrogen. So it's totally normal for that bottom number to be low and it's, and it's considered, you know, okay, good for that bottom number to be kind of low because that represents the, the potassium, which we don't need in high, as high amounts. Um, but this is something where with the bone meal, the blood meal, um, I'm really, I really pay attention to what plants I'm putting that on and I'm really trying to match them up to the plants that need those. I don't have to think so hard about the fish fertilizer. Everything loves fish fertilizer. There is nothing in the garden that you put fish fertilizer on and it's going to harm it. That's just not going to happen. Everything loves fish fertilizer. It is just like an energy shot for plants. Um, if, I'm, if my plants, if I'm uh, watering plants one day and I notice that some of them are yellowing, um, I don't have many blossoms anymore, um, they're just not looking vibrant green, 
or they're not growing quick enough. You know, like we all want our plants to grow super fast and, and but there it does take time. But once you are gardening for a little while, you can kind of tell when it's taking too long and you're like, hey, something's something's going on here. I need to um, there's there's lacking some kind of nutrient nutrition there or even just water. Um, so if I find a plant that's just not growing as fast as it should be, a shot of for fish fertilizer is normally what it needs. Um, so stunted growth, yellowing, all those things that I just listed, fish fertilizer really takes care of those things and you don't have to think too hard about which plant is it okay to put this on. Um, it's, it's an all around, all around winner. Okay y'all, I think that was it, four or five, yeah, I'm getting confused because I don't have a bag of, of blood meal so it's throwing me off, but we did discuss five which, of, which is the amendments that I use every single season. This was my first year with this. I won't be without it again, Lord willing. Um, it is, these are the amendments that I go to time and time and time again, almost no matter what kind of new seed varieties or plants that I'm trying to grow. As long as I have these on hand, I have what I need to um, produce a productive, to have a productive garden. Okay, y'all, I hope that was helpful to you. I mentioned in the beginning of this video that now is the time going into this time frame of like September, October, November, December, so fall and winter, you can get some really good deals. Um, and that's why I'm putting this video out now because you can snag some good deals in the off season. Okay, I hope that was helpful to y'all and we will see you next time. Bye.